I'm Tammy Lee Meyer with Dasaratha Rama, and welcome to Growing Systems of Success, Playing It Forward. Uh, this segment, we're going to focus on the, the Growing Systems of Success canvas. So I'll ask Rama to take us away. Okay. The Growing Systems of Success canvas uh, is intended as a one page summary of the whole model. Uh, I'm hoping it'll serve as a visual reminder that once people see it, they can remember all the components. And there are a lot of them. There are 20 plus components in the model. And even though we might be just working with one of them, I think it's a quick review of what it is. It was developed by Boas Branding and um, truly appreciative of the work they've done because uh, you know I can't draw. So <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's helpful when somebody has the graphic skills to take what I'm trying to say and create that for me. Absolutely. And it is all about collaboration because everyone has different skills. Yeah. Yes. Great. So let's jump in. Okay. So again, Tammy, we are going to be using the, um, using the Plectica on this one. Wonderful. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk us through a pieces of the canvas and how I see us using them in practice and then wrap it up with you know, a view of the entire canvas. Perfect. So that way we can go piece by piece. So a quick recap, we talked about the orchestrator, influencer, and participants in networks. Uh, influencers are very important. They uh, are the energy source in the network. They help participants grow their systems of success. So the first thing, uh, and I've used tags to show how I'm thinking about each of the parts of the canvas in a scenario. So if I take my own network, which is a growing systems of success Facebook group that I'm trying to orchestrate, uh, my intent is growing systems of success. Yes. So, yes. okay. So I want to help people grow their connections, conversations, and so on. But I have a particular application in mind. So let's take my signature use case, which is being an orchestrator. Um, so the competence I'm looking at it is the competence of being an orchestrator, for example. So yeah. there yeah. are competencies in that role as well. Uh, it could be for any role, but in my particular group, the participants are hopefully they're, you know, already orchestrators or might be becoming orchestrators. And that's one group of audience that I hope to serve. Yeah. So, so let's, you know, take it from there. So what I would like is for this group of orchestrators to grow their own systems of success, which means to grow their own competence in uh, competence in being orchestrators. So what does that look like? So, you know, what makes us a better orchestrator? So I'll jump in and say what I've noticed is that you jump in with, very, with small pieces and put them out there for conversation for people to be able to interact with. And yes. then based on how people are interacting, you modify how it is that you're going to present next. So it really is an integrated um, exchange that, that needs all the players to, to, make it, uh, to, to make it live. Absolutely. That's what I've discovered, that uh, I'm finding that people connect better to my message when I present it in small pieces, one at a time, fully well knowing that they're all integrated and they really work together. But at the same time, people cannot engage 22 pieces at the same time. So um, it's very important. And again, you can see the role of conversations. I came to this you know, moment of clarity through conversations. Uh, I used to keep presenting the canvas because I like to think systemically. I like sharing the whole canvas. I would talk about it in sections. But where I've ended up is really focus on one building block at a time. And uh, it, you're right. I mean, I think that that's a very important skill for an orchestrator to do. Another skill is uh, guiding the flow, but which means there's a flow. It's not top down as we discussed in the other video. We can't just tell people what to do, but sort of noticing the flow and then taking that sort of action that brings us all together and then take the next step forward. So one of the things I just started is doing a newsletter and uh, I'll blame you for that because uh, <laughs> the, the, the conversations and interactions seem to be growing in the group. And uh, I felt, you know, at least a short 
uh, newsletter, nothing fancy. It's just going to be a Plectica card. So as we're doing things, I'm just tossing them into one Plectica card and I'll show the newsletter towards the end and good to go. I'll just release one every week for now and we'll see how that goes. Wonderful. And it's a great way to be able to kind of recap what you're learning. Yes. And track yes. the journey. Yes. So that's the desired result. And I hope that our orchestrators will feel, hey, I'm getting a, to be a better orchestrator by being in this group. And there could be other audiences for sure, but that's definitely one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, the challenge. So that's the orchestrator piece, piece of the canvas. Uh, now we can drill down a little bit and frame the challenge a little bit more. It is a question of the orchestrator, I feel, is responsible for the flow of resources in the system. You know, the influencers bring resources, but uh, orchestrators guide the flow. So the example I was giving was of a newsletter. To me, that's a very living, dynamic resource. So I'm saying, here's what's happening. Look, you know, we changed the name of our group. You know, well, not the name, the, the graphic of the group because of the graphic that um, Harry Vanderbilt did. did of playing it forward. So we changed that last week. Uh, we also started sharing the video pieces. So definitely the adding is changing. And I also added the newsletter, as I said. So seeing what's happening in the system, I mean, uh, the videos started happening, so we started adding them. And then thinking ahead to how that could shift the interactions. And, and uh, so far it looks really promising. It's what's giving me the enthusiasm for doing more videos. It, it, it looks like, people connect, you know, I think otherwise you're just a bunch of words, you know, and suddenly people see the video and now I think, you know, they see the human behind the words. Yes. So I'm seeing the importance of that. And uh, I want to grow that by, you know, you're our first influencer in the video conversation and I'm hoping we can get more of those influencers in here. I'm really excited to see uh, what the, uh, the conversations between groups will be. Uh, yes. within your group of orchestrators and influencers yes. and participants. Yes. Yeah. And I'm hoping that, you know, as soon as we settle down with some of these tools, I'm hoping that we can bring them into our conversations as well. So Wonderful. going back, that's the ongoing challenge. You know, what resources do I add? How much do I add is a big one because uh, as I found out, you know, I can give everything I know about the GSS, but it just overwhelms people. So, you know, just finding out how much. So, if, you know, if influencers, uh, if, so setting that boundary is really an important issue, I think, because sure, I have a lot of engaging influencers who are doing very meaningful work, but if everyone pours all different things that they're doing, it is very confusing. And especially think about onboarding, the new member comes in and they are totally confused and lost. So that's why I came up with the idea of the influencer of the month. So we do have to sort of regulate the flow a little bit to improve the experience, I think. Yes, yes. And so in, ter in terms of orchestrating, what I'm hearing is, is, is really about bringing together the resources of the network yes. in such a way that, that yes. they, each piece kind of supports each other. And in this case, these pieces are people. Yes, right? people and other resources. We have, we have the informational resources. We have the video conversations. We have the newsletter. We have the... Uh, canvas. We have a lot of informational resources that um, that are part of this work. So, um, you know, and, and I know that you're in the other group also, you're sharing several uh, informational resources there. Yes. Yes. And in terms of growing interactions, what I'm really excited at what we're seeing in the spaces. People are really yes. responding yes. and uh, it feels like it feels like a, a real deepening. And, and, you know, I kind of break down the interactions in the same way as the PhD project. It's a very simple breakdown. The PhD project has two main conferences. One is their annual conference, which is their flagship conference for prospective PhD students. And then you have another conference, which the Doctoral Student Association Conference, uh, which is there for, you know, people who are already in the PhD program. So the way I'm seeing is that's such a generalizable pattern. So for any group, uh, there are people coming in, you know, I've had several new people enter in the last couple of weeks and there are the people who are already there. So unless, you know, we get to a point where we can have two groups, which I'm not ready for just at this moment, uh, we have to find a sort of a flow which works for both. You know, I mean, it's, 
engaging enough for those who are already in there and at the same time doesn't overwhelm the new ones. Yes. And when uh, this piece on transforming networks, what are you imagining, intending? How do you see, uh, how do you see that? I'm, I'm you know, picturing already uh, what this uh, network could look like, say tomorrow, say five years from now, say 10 years from now. And I'm very excited. I feel, uh, you know, I can see us doing conversations. I can see, uh, you know, the influences coming into the conversations. And as those are fed into not just the growing systems of success group, but also the ecology of systems thinking and other groups, um, I can sort of picture the growth in interactions. So transformation is uh, sort of noticing what's happening here and now, but also being able to picture what uh, could be happening. And then you have to take the actions in terms of the adding. So T and the plus are related. So even a simple step like adding the newsletter is sort of, you know, building towards that future. Yes, yes. Wonderful, cool. Okay, what's next? So that was the challenge and uh, the solution is uh, simpler than we think. Play it Play forward. forward. <laughs> <laughs> so the orchestrator doesn't have to do all the work. That's the good news. You know, once you can get some of those influencers in there uh, playing together, mm -hmm. you're on, you know, I mean, uh, so the orchestrator is there, you know, clarify the rules of the game, mm -hmm. you know, guide the flow, and then, you know. Yes. So if you can take uh, pause for a minute. Wonderful. And we're back. <laughs> I don't think, just one minute. Can you, can you start over? Okay, and we're actually back now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, we were talking about uh, playing it forward and I'm really getting focused on that building block. I think if it's say one single building block that the orchestrator can stay focused on, and the rest will start to fall in place. So maybe the key question for the orchestrator is, how do we really make playing it forward happen? So how do we engage people in that process? Yes. And what I also love about the visual is the windmill and that you are going to be working between all of those six C's to yes. be able to facilitate yes. a, a, a full expression of orchestrating a network. Yes, yes. And also the wheel is the, you know, the influencer turning, the wheel being the energy source. So there are several things I hope the wheel communicates. Yes, absolutely. So that's the general nature of the solution that we are looking at. Great. And on to the journey. On to the journey. <laughs> so the journey has uh, five components. And uh, we go from awareness to transformation. Um, you know, just walking through our own example, for me, you know, one piece of the awareness was just seeing PhD project work with media impact. Uh, I already had a level of awareness that I need media making support. So that was good. I wasn't too keen on being on video, but that's fine. You know, we're <laughs> working through that one. Uh, and then, uh, you know, there's, Awareness is multifaceted, multi-layered. There are just a lot of different things you have to be aware of. Awareness of what's happening in the space, you know, awareness of influencers. Because I can see some new people coming in and I can spot the signs. I think they might well be influencers in my group pretty soon. Yes. Some already are becoming influencers. So... That's the awareness. And of course, the other part of the awareness is the technical, you know, what does Zoom do? What does it do for me? Yes. But also, uh, I have other awareness. I use thought space, I use Plectica, so I can sort of have the awareness of maybe how to bring those things together. Yes, I love the mashup aspect of this, especially yeah. because uh, in using all of the tools, we can get different windows into the system. Yes. Yes. And uh, that leads to, oh, Okay, no problems. I see that somehow it's flipped. Integration should have been 
over there, no problems. We'll switch it around. And look how easy that is. <laughs> yes. I don't know how it got switched. Must have happened sometime. Great. Okay. So awareness and then discovery. It, it doesn't, it looks like it, it's trying to pop in there. Yeah. It, yeah. Okay. But I don't know why it should, but. Okay. Oh, I missed that. It's easier on the bigger computer. I have more trouble on the laptop somehow. Okay, okay there we are. There we go. So, there we go. It's back. We don't want transformation out of there. So, <laughs> so discovery is where we are. You know, every session is discovery. And I think that's partly why I'm enjoying the Zoom because I think, you know, you mentioned this last time about the show and tell aspect of it. So, what I'm hoping people will take away from this video is that we are paying it forward means we are discovering, we are exploring, we are yeah. trying things out. They don't always work. It doesn't look, you know, very polished sometimes because we are still exploring it. We're and hacking. So, yes. And I want, I want people to feel that because, you know, we cannot tell them to do that, but have a perfectly polished presentation that represents an endpoint and then say, you know, now you go and explore. So I'd rather, you know, we lived that explore and invite people to join us in that. Yes. And it's working. Yes. It is. So then comes direction. Uh, we have moved to direction really fast because I'm already seeing, you know, where to use Zoom in combination with ThoughtSpace, where to use Plectica. Uh, for me, it's very clear when I want to talk about the canvas, Plectica is really good because I can I have a card for each of the components of my canvas. So while Boaz Branding decide, designed the canvas, uh, Dr. Cabrera, who, you know, is sort of the, done the work behind Plectica, uh, his, he, you know, I met him when he was doing his PhD thesis and he came up with his uh, DSRP, Distinction Systems Relationship Perspectives method. So I've known him for a long time. I've trained with him for several years. I have a black belt in the DSRP method. And, uh, you know, see how it all comes together. So Plectica has been many years in the making. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as I'm getting ready to do all this, here we have Plectica. So it all Perfect. comes together. And when did Plectica release? Is it really recent? Very recent. Actually, the, the previous version was Kingfisher. And that's what it was almost till the end of last year. Uh, they changed the name. It officially became Plectica. And uh, last Fall, I tried doing the canvas several times in what was then called Kingfisher. I kept feeling this is good, but I would walk away because image support wasn't there. You know, they had released the beta, but image support wasn't there. So the moment they added the image support, I said, this is it for me. You know, I mean, I can now put the canvas in there. That's awesome. So that's, uh, that's the way it is. So you can really break it down. You can show relationships and so on. So that's a journey, very important part. A key point, just quickly, but it, you know, supports people in all the phases. Right. You just dropped out for a moment there, Rama. My, our internet connection was a little. Yes. It's, it's warning me on my side that the connection is unstable. So but you're clear it. now. You're clear now. So. Okay. So what I was saying was, uh, you know, tying the pieces together uh, we were looking at playing it forward uh, and, you know, relating it to the journey. There's an important link between playing it forward and especially awareness. So I'm hoping that when other people look at the videos we create, it shifts their awareness. And I'm already seeing that. I'm seeing excitement. People are getting excited about the mashing up the tools. Yes. So, you know, it, it, uh, including the creators of ThoughtSpace, they're, I think, uh, you know, enjoying this too. Because when you create tools, you, you can't think of every possible use that people will put it to. So I think they're also liking, you know, where we are going with this. Awesome. So uh, we'll, we'll learn more about the integration and transformation, even though they're obvious. I feel yeah. like this is all happening in our journey yeah. together. Yes. And integration is, you know, I think integration is practice and we are, we have actually, we are coming to repeatable practices very, very fast. It's, you know, not usual, but I think it's 
where we both are in our journey, mine's been 10 years in the making, yours has been about the same time in the making, probably more. And so I think we have come to integration at a very rapid rate. So yes. that's not to be expected. Don't go by that. <laughs> we were both uh, we were, ready. Yes, we are both ready. So that's what it is. Uh, now comes initiating a very, you know, that sh uh, four activities that I think are very interesting for this model because initiating, adapting, sustaining, and extending. Uh, tying it back to the PhD project concept, uh, the pro uh, you know, they can raise awareness, but just because people are aware, they may not sign on to doing the PhD. Uh, they may not be able to adapt successfully to the demands of the program. They may not persist. They may quit. You know, PhD programs are notorious for low retention rates. And, uh, you know, then the extension, which is going beyond the PhD, maybe taking the lessons from the whole experience and using it elsewhere. So all of these things to me are also indicators because originally I had the added and then I felt like it needed something more. And so the activities came in and I think those activities really help you see what we want happening. So if this is all going well, for example, if, you know, as we play it forward, we are hoping other people will jump in and want to try Zoom in, ThoughtSpace, Zoom in, Plectica. We, you know, we want to see what other people do with these tools, which is adapting because they may do something different and sustaining. We are hoping that they'll be energized. They'll want to persist in that and we'll be there for them. And uh, that's the idea too. So that's where the support part comes in because somebody might get really energized and make their first Zoom video and then never do it. But if we are out there, we are sharing, other people are sharing, it really gives that energy and motivation to persist. And a model to follow because I think this kind of peer produced media, I've really been looking for someone who just wants to jump in and hack around. Uh, yes. But you have to have the courage to do it and, and the material and all of your years of work. Uh, so when other people can see it, they can see how that can relate to their own, whatever they're presenting. And yes. that's the whole point. So, yes. So, so that's the <coughs> journey and the activities and the results. So we come back to the original desired result, which is growing systems of success. And uh, we can just walk through, you know, I mean, uh, I think our conversations have grown. Uh, we, we are definitely, you know, making that connection, figuring out how we're going to do this together. Uh, we're connecting to other people, you know, I'm connected to some of the folks, you know, yes. and, uh, you know, we're getting clearer every day about how we want to do the video. Um, definitely choices, you know, I mean, I wouldn't have last week, I would never have thought that was going to sign on willingly to do videos, but here we are. Here we are. And here we are. And we actually have a pretty good uh, process for coordinating because I think we're both process oriented. So it's just basically blending the process. Again, we're moving well because you've thought through your media process for a number of years. I saw that in your medium article and you're ready to roll and we are building that confidence, drawing on each other's competence in complementary areas. Yes. So the indicators look good. That's my dashboard. That's wonderful. Well, thank you for the overview. Uh, it does take time to be able to really dive into yeah. complex systems. Yeah. And yes. so as we, as we do these, I'm getting clearer and clearer, not only on the model, which is one thing, uh, yes. but also my living experience with this model. And, you know, since last week, my competencies have grown so much. And I can also see and identify, I'm aware of where I need to continue to grow. And so it's, it's really helpful and I think perfect timing for me uh, to collaborate with you so that we can, we can uh, do this, this work and, and explore what's next. Can, can I uh, stop this screen share and just show another one for just a minute? Absolutely. <coughs> yeah, it's, it's been really powerful, Rama. And I can't wait to see how other people will, will be in this space with us and that more collective conversation as well. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm.